Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Don't cry, movie thoughts. Now, other than the chase at the very beginning and the the bar fight that he is involved in, un, you know, and and the the chase at the beginning was also about Brandon being found out as having been born female. You know, yeah. Other other than these few things, minor things, there is really little to no violence in this before they find out that Brandon was born female and then assault, rape, and eventually kill him. And this makes the this makes these already brutal acts hit that much harder. You know, it's not it's not one of many brutal, violent acts. It's one of the only, or rather, yeah, the acts after he is found out is, you know, they make up some of the only. It's only then that the movie really has a lot of violence, especially people on people violence. Before that, it's tension. We, you know, there's definitely a lot of tension surrounding John and Tom, and what, you know, and some verbal fights, and what is said about their pasts. Now, and the, the use of handheld camera for the attacks really puts us there, and just, yeah, makes it impossible for us to distance ourselves from it. And the, this is also a a depiction of rape that really understands at least some of the time rape is used to humiliate and dominate and not for sexual pleasure the they don't consider Brandon natural so they have to fix him and this takes the form of you know see you you know only hetero heterosexual sex is okay and you're a girl so you only have to have sex with boys and so so you have to only have sex with boys and something that also really hits is that after the rape the two of them behave towards Brandon as though they were still friends as though what they just did was a reasonable or acceptable response to finding out that he is anatomically female. You know, as if they had found out that this friend of theirs who's a guy is, you know, he's into girly music and they tease, or maybe even bully. Some would say that that is, you know, an appropriate response to that. Yeah, it's, it's, to them, you know, this this falls under. I mean, they could have left him, you know, out there. I mean, that's like like John did after the joyride. Yeah, they 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 give him a ride home, and the only real aspect left in the way they act towards Brandon that really you know shows that they just raped him is them threatening that, you know, he can't tell anyone and trying to prevent him from running and yeah now the, they didn't like Brandon because he was male that was incidental you know, it. so, so it's not as though 
yeah, you know, it's it's not as though something that was like let's say that he had promised that you know he was actually rich and he was going to get them completely out of their situation. So you know, go ahead and quit your jobs and you know spend all your money getting to this other place. Then I'll you know help you from there. And then they found out that he has no money. At that point, it makes sense to get really angry because he has just done a lot of damage to their lives and their the stability of their lives. But this, nothing he has done has predicated on what how how he presented himself. You know, ex except to them that it's you know not okay for you know a a trans individual who identifies as male having sex with you know a, a woman it's and the you know the sometimes when when you know and even care about someone from a minority can lead to a more positive view of the group even if you only after meeting after getting to care about them realize that they're part of that group but this, you know, as seen here, and sadly, many other times, the the hatred is just too deep. And the fact that they really cared about Brandon doesn't matter anymore. And the I, I to to an extent, John was already angry with with Brandon he you know he didn't really like yeah and, and Tom to an extent as well they they didn't think he was you know masculine enough maybe but Lana's mother for example clearly cared about Brandon and suddenly it's I don't want it in my house you know and the I I the filming there is fantastic and the 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 focus you know it's it's from Brandon's perspective and basically he's he's it hit him really hard and he is you know fighting to to kind of fully stay you know fully fully be there in the situation and you know the focus keeps going in and out and the first thing you see of Lana's mother there is the hand that comes up you know no stay away don't you know don't come in here and then you know yeah and again referring to Brandon as though this was again let's let's hypothetically say that Brandon yeah, let's let's say that Brandon, when he was much younger, you know, hurt an animal of theirs or something, you know, and then you know claims not to be that person, and then they find out that you know that was actually him. Again, rage and maybe even denying shelter is is you know more understandable in that situation, but. This is this is someone who they consider unusual and in their view unnatural. And that's enough. That you know, Lana even says he's hurt. But it but it doesn't matter. It's not enough. And and Lana's mother even when she sees the gun, you know, reveals that that Brandon is at Candace's. And and that's also you know Candace, Candace and Lana both still care about Brandon. I mean, at first, Candace, you know, it's, she she says afterward, I opened my big mouth and now no one's talking to me. And yeah, at first she's just she's confused because she's seeing some things that doesn't that don't line up with. You know, she's, yeah, she, she finds some, 
some of what Brandon accidentally left behind and such. And but but afterwards she does still offer shelter. And the I suppose that Now, I talk about this briefly in the review as well, or hint, hint towards it at the very least. Brandon is male. He, your gender identity is what you define your, yourself as, while your gender, assign, gender assignment is, you know, your biological gender, your anatomical, you know, the gender that the world thinks you are. And, yeah, Brandon's assigned gender is female, but he identifies as male. And it's not wrong to define yourself as a gender you weren't born. And it especially in no way makes an assault, a rape, and a murder in any way justified. It, yeah, as I've already somewhat gone into, it causes no harm, and there's no, it shouldn't be met with abuse, and even violence, and sadly it too often is, because of ignorance and bigotry. Now, the, the romance between Lana and Brandon has been compared to Romeo and Juliet, and it makes a lot of sense. There is this thing of, yeah, their their parents and their, their environments, their social environments, won't accept that they, you know, there's every reason they should be together. You know, they, they're in love and, you know, and, and it gets to that, you know, near, not long before it's, you know, before they realized that he was born female, you know, she starts really dreaming as well. You know, at first, you know, earlier he remarks, you are one cranky girl, Lana. You know, he keeps, each time he meets one of them, he kind of relates to them as if, you know, as, you know, like he really understands the situation. You know, Candace, you know, bad night, ugh, the worst, and, you know, you know, no, don't change your name, it's, you know, and, yeah, this whole thing, you know, and, and then he defends her against, you know, the the guy in the bar, and, you know, and he's like, you know, you you, you have nothing on me, I'm, I'm much bigger than you, obviously, you know, I would win in a fight, and then John and Tom come in, but, yeah, you know, not long after, you know, it's this thing of, you, you have such tiny hands, no, I don't. And I don't remember the name, but that, you know, I'm guessing boxer, what would the words they use to describe his, yeah. You know, so there he's relating to John and Tom. But with Candace, you know, he keeps giving her compliments and being like, you know, and she is just not having it. She does not want, you know, and gradually she does fall for him and... Yeah, not long before he is found out to be anatomically female, she even says, you know, we'll go together, and I'll karaoke, and you'll be my agent, and if I can't sing, you karaoke, and I'll be your agent. It's perfect. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's such a naive and hopeful and, you know, I idea, and you want it to work out. You really do, but... Even as you hear her say that, you you realize, and deep down she probably does too, that that's not realistic. You know, it's... I like that, you know, Brandon is... Brandon has personality. It, 
when when doing stories like this, you have to be careful not to make a martyr out of the you know the the protagonist. And obviously, again, nothing that he said or did, you know, makes makes any of what was make the makes the assault, the rape, and the murder at all okay or none of it, of course, but I do like, he's not a Gary Stu, he, you know, he has passions, there are things that he loves, he, he wants to have fun, he's not like constantly keeping his head down, just trying to get by, he grabs life and tries to make a future out of, you know, and, and he can be kind of, yeah, naive and hopeful and, you know, no matter how many times he is attacked for finding out as having been born female, he never gives up on it, you know, and that's that's really inspiring. And it would still be tragic if, the, you know, when, when this happens to someone who has tried to hide it and has tried to be, you know, who society expects them to be, and they're still, you know, attacked that is also tragic, but I suppose you say in this case, it's kind of, it makes a very compelling story. You know, the, the story being told here is especially compelling because this is a, you know, this is a guy who really did yeah, you can you can relate to that. You can relate to really wanting to make, you know, make a future and get out of this, you know, really depressing situation of this tiny midwestern town. You know, and Kimberly Pierce wanted and I'd say managed to focus on. Brandon the person where the media focused on you know oh this is a girl in boys clothes that's weird and you know the the brutality of the attack and yeah you know that those are the kinds of things that get a lot of attention from you know and again obviously the brutality of the attack is important but it is not the it, that that makes Brandon just a a an object of hatred rather than a subject. This this was a human being. This was someone that you know. If if we just read you know that what's that thing you know a a you know one person dying that's a a tragedy a million people dying that's a statistic. I think Stalin said that or something. And yeah, if you're just reading if it's if it's just a name and a bunch of details about this horrible thing that was done to a person, then it's Maybe not a statistic, but you don't understand the situation and you don't understand how much, you know, because it's, you can't relate to that. You can't relate to just, you know, this, this horrible attack because thankfully most of us have not experienced that. So when you read that, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm glad that didn't happen to me. It's not that this person had everything taken from them. This was, this was horrible. And yeah, it's 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 sad to see there's so much hatred towards trans even today with you know most recently Leela Alcon after being bullied to the point of committing suicide still being referred to by her own parents as a boy. And you know, this whole issue of whether or not trans, you know, may use the, the toilet of their, the bathroom of their assigned gender or, you know, or the one they identify as. And I, a lot, a lot of people, you know, in, in user reviews online hate the ending. And I agree that it is horrifying. But it should be because this is what really happened. The you know all the details. This is the kind of thing where, if this hadn't been an independent film, and it, it still was cut down by you know because of the MPAA, 
if this had been a big studio picture, a lot of it might have been cut. You know, the, you know, I, I can see a studio exec being, why, why do we need the, the, the first assault? Why can't we go straight to the rape? Or does the rape really have to go on for so long? And, you know, do we have to see the, the murder so, you know, so up close? Can't, can't we do that off screen or something? You know, and that would completely have taken the, the teeth out of the, the, the edge from this. And again, this is, this could so easily have been exploitative. Kimberly Pierce did an amazing job on this. It, it doesn't feel exploitative. It, it again, it, it puts us right there. Again, the, the media story was exploitative. This puts us right there. We, we completely understand. We've been following Brandon this whole time, and we really feel for him. And suddenly, this horrible thing happens. And yeah, it, it's, it's scarring. It's something you never forget. But this actually happened, you know, it's it's like Holocaust stories don't shy away from it because it's it really happened and this is something that you know there there are people today who claim that the Holocaust never happened. There are people today who say, you know, you know, the real thing with with bathrooms and trans people, the real danger is if they go into the the bathroom of their of the gender they identify as, then they're gonna, you know, start abusing the others who were born that gender, you know, and it's been said many times, you know, by by many others and many of whom much smarter and much more and who understand this issue much more, but if that's what you wanted to do, isn't this an awful long way to go for it? Isn't isn't opening yourself up to all this bullying and abuse a really illogical way to go about trying to? But yeah. but but yeah. Briefly more on the ending. I think it's it's excellently done. It really just it hits and it hits hard. A lot of online user reviews as well have have called it good but sad and I I always find it strange when people express it that way when when people act as though the two are often mutually exclusive I I personally find that tr tragedies are often some of the things we can learn about, I, mean, I just mentioned, you know, the, the Holocaust. These are things we have to learn from. Otherwise, they will happen again. And, yeah, it's it's going to leave you really depressed and, and destroyed. But I always say, if you don't want a movie to have an effect on you, whether, you know, in this case, make you sad, in, you know, a comedy, it'll, you know, have you laughing. A horror movie, it'll have you scared to turn out the lights when you go to bed. If you don't want a movie to have an effect on you, why are you watching a movie? You know, it... Yeah. Now... I think... You know, Sarsgaard mentioned that he tried to... to really add a lot of charisma to his character. So that even though his... His character isn't very sympathetic, but I do think he managed. I mean, you know, these, yeah, these are actors very much, yeah, very much into the the kind of indie movies and and difficult roles. You know, Hilary Swank, Chloe Sevigny, and uh, crap, I don't. Peter Sarsgaard, that's his name, and. Yeah, it's it, he plays it just right because you can kind of see why they would still, you know, hang around this guy. Why they haven't, you know, just frozen him, frozen him out, and you know he's 
very clearly unstable. You know, he he can't take criticism and these kind of you know when you know after the joyride. You know, for it's it's clear that it's his fault. He you know yeah and and then he turns and says to Brandon that he should you know never do that again and you know Brandon Brandon puts up with a lot from John and Tom in the movie but that's one of the places where he really says no this is you're you're being ridiculous this is you know you can't possibly believe what you're saying right now you cannot possibly and we see Tom, you know, because Tom is, Tom can be quiet a lot of the time and kind of, yeah, he, he doesn't, he doesn't say an awful lot, he doesn't do an awful lot, but he does, like he says, he, he's the only one who can control John, you know, he, was they they say he has no impulse control you know and we see tom like calm down don't 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 keep pushing and then it you know it it goes wrong and john leaves them there you know it's just it's it's like he's a child it's you know to to think that kind of yeah you know and and candace even said that's my car you know they the yeah, it's it's ridiculous, and you know, and and Brandon is like, you know, that he didn't expect that Sarsgaard, that that John would go to that, you know, and and the others are just kind of frustrated. It's you know, I, or they they might be somewhat surprised, but it's still he's he's part of our circle, he's part of our lives, and yeah, this is just the and and. You know, it's not only even, you know, it's, it's not even only when people criticize him and, and this kind of thing. When, you know, I, be, I believe it's April. Yeah, I, I believe it's, it's his own daughter. You know, when, you know, it's, it's that thing of like, yeah, she, she has an accident and John flips out and yells at her, and it's just this guy should not have a kid. This guy cannot handle. It. And and then he starts, you know, criticizing her mother instead of just, yeah. He. It's it's. It takes very little for him to lose control, and he doesn't always get violent, but, yeah. Now, I I quite like the the sympathy and empathy of I don't know what exactly she is. I I'm gonna go with nurse, which is probably wrong. The one who who helps Brandon after the attack and yeah very very much just I mean like she says she I have to I, I need you to to remove your pants and it's she understands she understands that this is extremely hard for Brandon and it's and and it's it's even it's hard on several different levels it's it's extremely hard to be in that situation to have just been assaulted and and it's also that this you know we, we see him him also cover cover himself cover his chest and again you know part of that is just a a you know a, a shyness you don't want to be seen naked by you know someone who isn't you know, someone that you really want to be intimate with. But it's also this thing of, he is a man, and he knows it, and 
when other people see these parts of him that 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 suggest otherwise, it's really it's really hard on him. And yeah, it's 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 so well played by both and yeah, it's it's a real it's a real relief that at least in that situation he isn't pushed. And then we of course have the cop questioning him and it's just it's so direct and so crass. And at least at least at first it's he is trying to like like some of the at least some of the time it's it's details of the rape so that they can make a proper report and they can they can process the case properly even though Brandon doesn't want you know but which is often the case rape rape victims you know it it goes underreported and even when it does they they feel bad about it they feel as though it's something that he even says which is it's it's in part also him the as as a chameleon him him trying to be accepted and him trying to give the other person the upper hand situation he says to them I know this was mine which is it's heartbreaking too but then the cop goes into this completely you know he starts asking questions that there's no reason for him to ask you know why do you dress like a boy and I think it's it's very when when Brandon is being assaulted and everyone is is you know and everyone is right there looking on and he sees he sees himself as out as, as among the crowd as looking in as Yeah, just the reality is just too hard. It's too hard to to deal with being being in that situation. And and so there's a kind of externalization, and it's like he's looking on to. And and it's also noteworthy that the Brandon looking on is very clearly fully male and masculine Brandon with with the clothes and everything. So it is. Yeah, it's. And I, another thing in this that would probably have been move, removed or at least made very different in this, if this was a big budget and, and very much a studio kind of thing, is that when Brandon is being found out as having been born female, that's early in the second half of the movie. The, you know, half of this movie is him being abused to to varying degrees by people who treated him as one of their own. You know, he we we spend you know half the movie getting to know these characters and seeing you know how well you know how well they do get along at least, even if they hate the situation that they're in, and then. The second half, yeah, which again makes that, that all the more devastating that we've spent this time seeing, you know, we know this isn't the first time, we see that in the very beginning, but this is, this is the worst time that it's happened, you know. I quite like the the letters that Brandon writes that you know we we hear one or two and we see him write you know he he writes the one to Candace when he's leaving you know when he he's gonna go deal with the court thing because Lonnie is right they they he can't keep running this has to be dealt with and. Yeah, he, he writes that he leaves a flower and, you know, you know, 
love always and and so it's it's very sweet and then and then Lana comes over and you know it's and and you know he's he's like a, a boy on Christmas morning it's it's just you know lights up and and he's you know butterflies and everything and and he stays you know it's or yeah it because because he can't he just he can't be without her you know and the and the letter with the and at the very end which is yeah just really hits hard with the yeah this little bit of hope and and Lana leaves and we do find out that she came back when you know to to when she had a kid she came back to, to false will to to raise her there but actually was it a girl I, I don't remember for sure to, to raise the child there and yeah and and that's also beautifully filmed with the the you know time lapse of the road and or time, no no never mind the this sped up footage of you know the the road under her and and in her face in real time and yeah it's it's very nicely done the this experience of just going far away going going as far away as, as possible I also love the cut the the yeah the the whole the the way it cuts during the the their first sex scene when you know it cuts to you know them there in the car and you know smoking pot and it's like time doesn't exist you know nothing nothing exists except these you know these four and and the bong and you know and then it cuts back and it's this thing of you know, you don't know exactly was was that before, was that after, was it like a day or two before, you know, before or after, and then it cuts to you know the girls talking about you know about one of them having sex and and this thing of you know did, did you do it you know and it's, uh, I can't worry they make me look fat. I bet Brandon doesn't think you look fat. Well, nobody looks fat lying down. You know, and yeah, and and then we we gradually realized she started to realize, and it's and it is this thing because it's you, you can't do it perfect, you can't hide it forever. That's also you know, Candace finds one of the one of the tampons. It's yeah, you know, there's there's sooner or later something is going to show that and yeah but but everything relating to that first sex scene very nicely cut and, and like she says you know I can't talk about it it's too intense and in part that is you know this this sexual experience but it's also these thoughts what is could could Brandon really be female and and you know the yeah this whole and yeah the and I I quite like I I believe it's also a letter the or maybe it was something she said to Lana but when when Brandon goes to the courthouse something he said to Lana, sorry. When Brandon goes to the courthouse, there is this, you know, you have the voiceover conflicting with the visual, this this thing of, oh, it'll all work out, and, you know, there's no problem, and it's, yeah, I don't remember the words, but, you know, this is, this is the, you know, what you get out of what is being said, and it's kind of the dream colliding with the reality and you know even even as he goes in there you can tell that something's you know 
you know that this isn't going to go well one way or another and then you know oh, oh you can just mail the receipt no 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 don't it'll just take a second and you know excuse me so the yeah you know Brandon about to get the receipt and there's this thing of you know, you, you kind of feel, you, you can tell that something's going to go wrong. And deep down, Brandon probably knows as well. It's just, he is, you know, he's he's leaving with that in his head, you know. And it's going to go perfect between me and Lana and everything, you know, yeah. And he, yeah, you know, screaming at the, at, at the TV, you just, Go, go, you know, it's, forget about the receipt, just just get out of there as fast as you can, and then, you know, and, you know, and, and him going to prison is also really, you know, that's where he loses control, that's where the situation gets completely, you know, he can't fix it anymore, you know. At the very start, we don't know exactly what happened there, but he's running away, and you know, yeah, you know these these guys, including the brother of you know the girl, are you know want to beat him up, but they can't get into was was that a truck? Yeah, where where Lottie lived, and that's you know that's it. That was about what happened there. He didn't go to jail, Brandon, and this time. He did, and in this situation where very much, you know, if if he hadn't really known anyone there, then maybe it wouldn't have been too much of a problem. But when he leaves jail and then comes back into that situation and they're realizing that maybe something is going on, you know, then it goes completely out of hand. Now, when John, you know, when he says that he, you know, he's happy to give Lana to Brandon, you know, that really says a lot about, you know, and the, and the way he talks to her and such, especially when it's about Brandon, you know, it's clear that he thinks that that he could just have her back, you know. It's I mentioned in the review that the men in these, you know, in this environment feel like they're entitled to these women, and if the women, if the woman says no, then you know the guy will insult her and such at, at the very least. And yeah, it's you know he he acts like Lana belongs or at least did belong to him. And the entire birthday is very nicely done seeing the, you know, Lana's mother making jokes and, you know, and, and the, the present from, I believe that's also Lana's mother with the, you know, legs kind of thing, you know, which also says a lot about the, the view on women in this place. Now, I also thought, you know, Lana pointing out that John is basically stalking her. It's like he's stalking her. You know, it's, yeah, it, you know, she's, she's calling it exactly like it is. And again, you know, he gets mad because he can't handle when things don't go his way and you know when when I like the briefly about the the courthouse you know when when Brandon when we hear the voiceover that's so positive and then we see the reality of the courthouse a word I should have used was juxtaposition. So if you could just mentally place that word in the in the sentence so it would make me sound even smarter, that would that would be good.
Thank you. Now, the, the a thing that is not juxtaposition, but is also very nice to order scenes, we see first Brandon waiting for for Lana outside the fact uh, yeah the I'm gonna go with factory and later we see John out there and it really you know this this similar motif is made to see I I have a vocabulary I really I'm not trying to sound as arrogant as I might come off anyway yes you know we see Brandon out there, we see John out there, and it's such a different tone. It's, yeah, with, with Brandon, it really seems sweet, and, you know, and he takes the picture, just, you know, no, it's not fair, I wasn't ready, and, you know, yeah, she said that earlier, is what I mean, and then with John out there, it's, it's almost kind of sinister, it's, you know, for one thing, they're not dating. So what exactly is he doing out there? You know, it's not like when she gets, you know, yeah, when when she can, when her shift is over, they're going to go home together or something, you know. And it certainly isn't like, you know, with Brandon, again, this kind of naive thing. And we, we are also told, I think it was Kate who covered for her, you know, You'd be in trouble if I didn't cover for you. Now, what happened, you know? And, you know, we just, we drove and just, and they don't buy that for a second. But, yeah, you know, with that, it's it's sweet. And it's this very, you know, they're, they're actually kind of like teenagers in that. Like, you know, let's ditch class, uh, you know, and, and go make out. And it's just, and, and then with John there, it's just... Yeah, it's it's really uncomfortable, and it it doesn't seem like Lana realizes he's there, and that doesn't really help, you know. Then then we're really talking stalking, you know, when when he isn't trying to be found out, when he's just sitting there watching her, and we don't know for how long either, and yeah, and I suppose. The, the last thing I wanted to say is I think the I've already talked briefly about when when they reveal that you know when when Tom and John reveal to the others that the Brandon was born female is Briefly, I just want to say the, the 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 shower that he finally gets to take. I th yeah, I think that back at Candace is, you know, that's again my, a, a real relief, and at the same time, it's this really pain thing because it, yeah, you know, it's it's this thing of she, he, can never w wash wash that away. It's. And, and he also comes to Candace and says, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not, you know, can, can I please have a place? It's, it's, I'm sorry. But, but yeah, the, when, when it is revealed to the others and, and Lana sees it and Brandon had told her that he was a hermaphrodite and that you know, and to that he would kind of, you know, hence placed in the, you know, the women's prison and, you know, that whole, and that's also where he really is completely, I've earned this in that with the, the jails where he loses control when, when she comes to see him in the cell and this whole thing and, you know, the, you know, the, the female, the, the woman in, in the cell, you know, give us give us a little privacy, watch the show, you know, and yeah, it but but yeah, that's where Lana sees that he is not a hermaphrodite, and I think the movie does well at 
she still loves him, but but there is she. It is a maybe maybe a, a shock, you know, and and that's you know, and and she she really tries to fix the situation, you know, she she tells Bren not to you know not to come in, and she you know tries to hide it and. You know, she said, "No, no, don't show me anything. I, you know, we just, we just gotta get them off your case, and then, yeah." Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.